Hello, comic book family, and welcome again to KJ's Porch Puppy Hot Shots. Uh, as I told you in the first one, this is Porch Puppy Hot Shots Dash 2. And these will be just a little bit, just again, just for clarity, just be some little bitty videos, books, me pulling out of the Porch Puppy, the Pickle Barrel, uh, just to show off a few books. And still, there might have been some, and I thank the Lord, we're up to 118 subscribers, you all, which is wonderful. It's a blessing. Never would have thought it. Never would have thought it. But I yet thank the Lord. You know, and as I said, you had so many other choices to choose from out there, but I yet thank the Lord for those of you who are maybe not even subscribed, but yet and still, you decide to come in and give me a looky look, and I greatly appreciate you, and yet praying for you all. Yeah, how can you pray for us and you don't know us, preacher? Look, I don't have to know you all by name to pray for you because the Lord knows everything, all right? So look, here's what we're going to do. As I said in the porch puppy, the first one, the hot shots, we still going to do our scripture. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from 1 Peter 4 verses, and it's 1 Peter chapter 1, 13 through 16, and it reads... Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lust of a uh, former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, mean Jesus, as he which has called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That don't mean the words that come out of your mouth. That means your life in all manner of conversation. 16th verse reads, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And that be ye means ye shall be holy. And that's your word for the day. Read the first chapter of first Peter. Read the whole chapter Read the verses. It will help you and it will do you much good, comic book fam. All right. I told you I'm not trying to hold you. So we're going to try to move expeditiously, as a, a former evangelist used to say. And we're going to move quickly, as again, expeditiously. Uh, check this out, you all. I had a visit from T. Ravis, one of my brothers here in town. And, uh, you know, if we find different books and different things, he'll pick it up. This one here, he said he had ordered for me. He said because, uh, well, basically, I, I like uh, Flash Gordon and uh, The Phantom. And this was a cartoon that came out back in the day, Defenders of the Earth. I heard that they was doing it again. They bringing back out uh, Flash Gordon again. But anyway... The emphasis on this book, it's a star of comics. It's a first issue. But here's the kicker. T. Rabbits is also getting into cleaning and pressing books. So not only did he give me this book that he had also cleaned and pressed. He gave me this one. A Sectars, number one. Said he cleaned it. He said the cover was, you know, just dirty looking and everything. It's a nice looking book and he's pressed it and he cleaned it or cleaned and pressed it. However they go now, but that's issue number one. Beautiful book. This one was another one. He said he cleaned and, and pressed it and the book, it just, it looks fine. I, I mean, it's a beautiful book. And I, you know, again, like I said, I thank the Lord for, you know, my brothers thinking of me like they do. You know, and, uh, you know, if I try to run across something that they may be looking for, you know, we have a trade for it. I just go ahead and give it and vice versa with them. But this one here is the power of Warlock number 14. Uh, remember when I first started collecting Warlock back in the day, this was the first one I've ever picked up. And then I was able to go back and I think he had an eight issue miniseries that uh, Gil Kane did the art in uh, back in the 70s, uh, late uh, early 70s, excuse me. But that's issue 14. This is another one that he cleaned and pressed. I've seen this book advertised in the back of DCs, but I've never owned this book. 
that I can remember. It's an 80 page. It's a Wonder Woman spectacular. And it came out in 78. Very nice. Y'all can even see who done the cover down there. Garcia Lopez. All right. Now we're getting into the books that I had that I was going to show you. This is a Fantastic Four annual number 11 going up against the Invaders. The book is beautiful, square bound. I'm just going to do it this way. I'm trying something new with the camera or with the phone rather. Third. Next one. It's King Size Annual number 12 with the Inhumans. I like the Inhumans. As y'all know, I just showed you the whole set that I put together. This here is not exactly it's the square bound, but they're smaller. Can you tell? They're smaller. The next book is Thanos Quest. Uh, it's by Jim Stalin, Ron Lim, John Beatty, Tom Vincent. Schemes and Dreams. And uh, this book is nice. When this book came out, I mean, everybody it was after this book. And if you had it, you didn't want to get rid of it. It's a square bound book. These, if I'm not mistaken, are first printings. And uh, just like the books. I really do. And I, I, you know, there for a while, I only had maybe one issue. Then I ended up getting, uh, trading that one off. And then down the road, ended up getting both of them yet again. There's issue two. Same creative team. This one, I always like to keep in the collection. Captain America Annual 8. And it's, uh, this book here is dealing with him and Wolverine going at it. You know, the adamantium against that vibranium or whatever the shield is made out of, vibranium mix. It's a nice book. If I'm not mistaken, mm, I'm trying to think, comic book family, I'm trying to think who did this book. But anyway, on the back of that one is Captain America 230, where he's going up against the hook. Always loved that cover. You know, the hook is up there putting, it, putting, putting in work on that shield and pushing Cap into the wall in the process, but he's holding his own. These are books here that I've always liked. Try to keep them in the collection. This is another one that tries to keep in the collection. It don't see the light of day too often. This is probably about the best copy of this Marvel Team Up 1, Spider-Man, and the new variation of the X-Men. Uh, and it's it's a great book. It's a good read. Hadn't read it in a while. But it came out in 1976. And it's a great book. And it is, again, a square-bound book. So we're going to turn it the way we usually do it. See that spine tick? Right there. But other than that, the book is great. Conan, the Barbarian, the Red Nails story. It's a Conan classic. Roy Thomas, Barry Windsor Smith. Great read. Y'all know how I am about Conan and Cole and and claw and wolf and i mean there's a bunch of them and i don't know how in the world that i got hooked on conan and all these barbarian books as i was coming up collecting i don't know it was just something about conan i mean he didn't have no superpowers but uh conan would put in some work i mean whatever he was fighting he was gonna put in some work you know it very seldom he took an l but he kept going and I thought that I always liked this particular character. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of great artists and writers down through the years. And I saw a book, as I told you, in uh, one of the uh, uh, one of somebody's comic episodes they were showing. And they showed the first iteration of Robert E. Howard's Conan. And he looked more like um, John Carter than he did Conan. But anyway, I think he said the book came out in the 1940s. Square bound book. It wasn't a comic comic, but it had pictures in it. Interesting. Interesting. Let me see. Ah, here's another one I'm proud of. I like the pulp characters. So the shadow, 
You know, said, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful cover. Ah, uh, Kaluta. My goodness. You know, Plug, Kaluta, Severin, there's others. But there's just certain niches that these guys had. And this was beautiful. This, this, this book here is beautiful. Now, the rest of the line or the rest of the set, it's hit and miss. But uh, if you can get your hands on a first issue of The Shadow from the D.C. in the 70s, how are you working on something? You can see. Name right there, folks. Luda. And you can see there's a little dog ear, little creases. But other than that, you all, the book presents extremely well. Next is, last two books, is Captain Adam. This is issue... 86 came out in June. It's a Charlton comic, also featuring Blue Beetle. These are nice. I've never really seen them in this real good shape down on this end. And if you do, you have to pay up for them real, you know, extremely. But y'all know what channel y'all on here. Porch Puppy, y'all, come on. This is issue 89. Another Charlton, good looking book. You know, you got to take it for what it's worth. And uh, I thank the Lord. My, my brother in here is teaching me some things. And uh, Night Tiger and, and and the other brethren that's teaching me that, you know, that I've been coming in contact with. And I'm learning a lot, you know, and I'm, I'm but, you know, truth be known. And that's again, full transparency. You know, when I go into and I give y'all the scriptures, you know, when I give you the scriptures, you know, these books, as you can see, I'm going to do this. I've never done that. That's the scripture I just read. First epistle of Peter. 66 books in this, in this Bible. And so, you know, it kind of makes it a little rough to kind of get into the book sometime or do a whole lot of uh, um, research on them. You know, every once in a blue moon, if something has caught my interest. But, and I guess you might say this is the easy man's way of collecting. You know, if you hear somebody talking about a certain book on uh, on their channel, and then, you know, you can kind of pick up those little tidbits, and then, you know, you just put them in your brain box for later. I know I um, was watching uh, an episode, I call them episodes, an episode of uh, Lunch Money Comics. And uh, Mike was talking about dealing with the first black superhero and a uh, black hero in comics. And then he brought up first time I've ever heard him bring up Lobo and not the Lobo that we know, the Lobo, uh, the black cowboy from the 1960s that Charlton put out. And uh, I thought I said, wow, that's the first time I've ever I've maybe seen maybe two or three other people that are folks that I follow. They might have brought this particular book up, but I've never heard him talk about it. He talked about Power Man. He talked about Black Panther and uh, Falcon he was talking about. But then when he brought up Lobo, it kind of got my ears perked, you know, because I'm like, wow, really? OK, then cool beans. That'll work. But anyway, as I said, I'm trying to keep these no longer than 15 minutes, 10, 15, if I can, you know, Lord bless. Uh, but this will be on up until the 150th episode, if it be the will of the Lord. Uh, but look, I yet love you all. Uh, again, I thank you all. Like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell your neighbors that Porch Puppy Comics is still on the move, still in effect through the grace of God. Come for the word. Stay for the comics. You know, and uh, I just thank you. I thank you. Gracious God, in the name of Jesus Christ again. We ask that you bless the comic book family. Keep them, Lord Jesus. Keep their families, Lord Jesus. Keep them as they go to and fro. Cover them, Lord Jesus. Protect them, Lord. Lord Jesus, we're living in this dark, cruel world. But, Lord, you can keep us. You'll bless us. And, Lord, and we thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to do this. But don't let this overshadow who you are and whose we are. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your scriptures, your word of life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for you said, what is truth? Thy word is truth. And I thank you today. And Lord Jesus, I love you because you first loved us. 
In Jesus' holy name I do pray. Thank God. Amen. Love you, folks. God bless you.